Hi. I'm pleased to have this opportunity to help you better understand vibrations that occur as a result of blasting projects. Let me start this discussion by saying that blasting professionals are proud to be an essential part of our economic engine and a major contributor to your standard of living. In fact, nearly everything that we use or encounter in our daily lives can be linked in some way to agriculture or construction and mining. You know, there's a saying that goes like this, if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. Just think about that. And if the many things we use or come in contact with daily are a result of mining activities, then you can be certain that explosives were used to retrieve it. Yes, the use of commercial explosives for blasting is an essential part of our economy and our modern way of life. The use of explosives by blasting professionals provides a safe and proven method for recovering our natural resources so that we can make the wide variety of products that improve our quality of life. Blasting is beneficial in so many ways. It helps produce materials that are used to build our homes, offices, and schools. Through blasting, we acquire chemicals for agriculture and even pharmaceuticals to ensure our health. Explosives are used to mine coal and other raw materials to produce energy that we use, to heat and cool our homes and places of work. Without the use of explosives, many construction projects such as the building of new highways, airports, energy sources, cityscapes, and even some historical monuments would be all but impossible. However, even with all of these benefits, we recognize that blasting may sometimes be a concern to nearby residents and property owners. We want to alleviate any concerns homeowners might have about the sounds they hear or the vibrations they may sometimes feel. It is our goal to provide helpful and reassuring information regarding questions commonly asked by people like you who live or work near blasting sites. Your home is subjected to vibrations from many potential sources. Those that occur naturally in the environment, those that are man-made, and those that are a result of blasting. We will cover each of these vibration sources in this video. But let's begin our discussion with those that result from blasting. Blasting projects are much more than simply drilling holes, loading them with explosives, and firing them. When explosives are used by blasting experts, most of the energy that is created is spent breaking rock. In fact, when the blast sequence is properly designed, almost 96% of its energy is used up inside the blast area itself. Only about 4-5% to of the energy travels away from the blast site, and it does so in the form of ground waves that travel through the earth and air waves that travel above the ground. These ground waves and air waves move outward from the blast site in all directions and they diminish rapidly as they move away from the blast site. The movement of these waves is similar to dropping a pebble into a pool of water. Notice that as the waves move outward from the point where the pebble enters the water, their size and frequency decrease. To help you understand ground vibrations a little better, consider a particle of the earth that lies just below the surface. As a ground wave from a nearby blasting project reaches the particle of earth, the particle moves in response to energy of the wave. This is similar to the response of a cork bobbing in the water from the wave energy moving under it. However, unlike the cork shown here, the movement from the vibrations of a particle in the earth in any one direction is very, very small. In fact, the full range of movement of the particle is about the same as the thickness of a piece of paper. That's right, just the thickness of one piece of paper. With this in mind, let's briefly look into the anatomy of vibrations. In fact, we will introduce three primary factors to you, intensity, frequency, and duration. This way, you can better understand how blasting professionals are able to measure and predict vibration levels so they are controlled. Let's begin by discussing how these factors relate to ground vibrations. The speed of this particle movement is referred to as intensity. Blasting experts refer to this speed as particle velocity, and they measure it in inches per second. The number of ground waves passing the particle within a one-second time frame is called the frequency of the vibration. We measure frequency in terms of cycles per second. 
The final term we'll consider is duration. Duration refers to the length of time the particle of Earth may vibrate. This is measured by blasting professionals in terms of seconds or fractions of seconds. Blasters measure the intensity, frequency, and duration of blast vibration levels so that the speed of the particle movement is maintained at or below legal limits. Speed limits, if you will. These measurements provide blasting experts with data they need to keep vibration levels within the speed limit. Airwaves, on the other hand, move away from the blast site through the atmosphere as waves of pressure. Blasters measure the intensity of these types of waves in units called decibels. And like ground vibrations, the number of pressure waves per second passing a defined point is known as frequency. And also, like ground vibrations, the duration of air waves is measured in seconds or fractions of seconds. Just as blasts are designed to protect your home from the effects of vibrations, blasters also monitor air wave intensity and frequency to protect your home. The point being made here is that the control of ground vibration and air waves is a sophisticated process accomplished by experts. They combine science, technology, and experience to use explosives in such a manner that vibrations and air waves remain below regulatory limits. It is interesting to point out that not all blasts can be heard. This is because blasts are typically low frequency events, which the human ear cannot detect. A familiar example of a low frequency event might be a gust of wind, which a person may be able to feel, but be unable to hear. The intensity of the ground vibrations and air waves that eventually reach your home or other structures depends on a number of factors. These factors include the type of blasting that is being conducted, such as quarrying or construction, and the distance between the blasting activity and your home. As a result, the vibrations from some blasts may be more noticeable to some homeowners than others. Sometimes a professional explosives engineer may place a blasting seismograph at or near your house or a neighbor's house to measure these vibrations. A seismograph is a device that measures both ground and air vibrations. It is the primary tool used by blasting professionals to evaluate the performance of these blasting activities. The data recorded by the seismograph and interpreted by a blasting professional ensures that the vibrations being generated are below the levels that may affect your home. As the ground waves and air waves, also referred to as air pressure waves, reach your house after a detonation, they may cause the windows to rattle and your house to vibrate slightly. What you feel or perceive immediately following a nearby detonation is dependent on where you are when the blast occurs. Let me explain this in more detail. The human body is extremely sensitive to vibrations. People can feel vibrations in their homes when those vibrations are a mere 2% of the levels normally allowed by law. This human sensitivity to extremely low levels of vibration is important to keep in mind as we learn more about how we perceive blasting vibration. When standing outside your home, vibrations are not as noticeable. This is because the ground is vibrating less than, let's say, the cups and saucers inside your home are vibrating. Plus, most of the airwaves traveling above the ground are below our range of hearing. However, when standing inside your house, vibrations are typically more noticeable to you because some of the things around you might be vibrating or rattling. Like a gust of wind, blast vibrations might cause walls of your home to creak a little and might cause dishes, knickknacks, or windows to rattle. Also affecting your perception of a nearby blast is how much you are surprised by a detonation. If you are expecting a detonation from a nearby blasting project, you will perceive it as being less of a concern than a blast that you do not anticipate. This is no different than how we perceive a clap of thunder during a summer storm. If you see lightning and expect a clap of thunder to occur shortly thereafter, it will not appear as loud as a comparable clap of thunder for which there was no warning. We've already discussed several ways that blasters control vibration waves so that homes and places of business near blast sites are protected. However, this is a broad topic, one that is important to people living and working near a blast site. So let's learn more about vibration waves and how they can affect your home. Let's begin by discussing your home and how it is built. All building materials used to construct your home are flexible. Some materials are more flexible than others. As a result, your whole house can flex from ground vibrations or airwaves. 
The components of your house will not crack as they flex unless they are pushed too far, such as, for example, when tornadoes or hurricanes occur. Blasting regulations and the limits they place on vibration levels are designed to assure homeowners that nearby blasting projects will not result in any damage to their homes. The specific ground vibration and airwave limits that are established by law often depend on the following factors. The type of structures being protected, the distance of your home from the blasting project, and the nature of the vibrations when they arrive at the structure. To better understand the reasoning behind these legal limits, let's use the example of posted speed limits along our nation's highways. Cars are easier to control and are less affected by higher speeds than our larger vehicles such as trucks. Consequently, different speed limits are often posted for cars and trucks. Similarly, vibration limits may differ depending on whether those limits are designed to protect a house or a different type of structure how far the structure is from the blasting project, and the nature of the vibrations when they reach the structure being protected, such as the intensity, frequency, and duration of the vibration waves. Even in instances where an airwave level is considered high, over 133 decibels, the primary effect of the detonation is to startle occupants of a house, not damage the structure. To help you better understand high airwave levels, let's take a moment and consider these examples. When you're near someone operating a power tool outside, the decibels typically reach 110. The sounds you hear when watching a jet airplane taking off or landing at an airport can reach 120 decibels. It may also be interesting to note that as startling and loud as thunder and fireworks can be, the high decibels they generate almost never cause harm to nearby homes. In fact, for a structure to be adversely affected, an airwave would have to exceed 140 decibels. Blasting regulations mandate that blasters keep airwave decibels well below such levels. This question relates to the concept of structural fatigue. Cracking in houses due to fatigue may occur when a building material is flexed repeatedly over tens of thousands of times at vibration levels below its failure point. For most blasting projects, the total number of significant vibration cycles a house is subjected to is less than a few thousand. This is really nowhere near the repetitious flexing that can cause damage to a home. Homes are continually exposed to a wide range of forces that are completely unrelated to blasting projects. Now, let's review forces that are man-made and learn about the impact they have on structures such as your home. Man-made activities, both indoors and outdoors, can cause a house or portion of it to vibrate. Indoor activities causing vibration include walking across floors, slamming doors, pounding nails, children playing actively, use of some power tools, bass speakers from stereos, and running up or down stairways. These activities can produce localized motion in a structure that is equal to or greater than the vibrations caused by blasting. Outdoor activities that cause a house to vibrate include airplanes flying low overhead, trains rumbling down nearby train tracks, automobiles traveling on nearby roadways, construction equipment operating in a neighborhood, large trucks moving over bumps in a road, fireworks displays, heavy bass sounds from stereos of passing cars, and trucks using their engines to slow down. If close enough to your house, these activities can produce ground vibrations and air blast levels similar to those produced by nearby blasting activities. Environmental forces can also impose significant forces on your home. Unlike man-made activities, environmental forces cannot be controlled or limited. They occur naturally. Environmental forces include thunderstorms and earthquakes even those that are many, many miles away. Wind gusts, temperature changes, and changes in humidity. Earthquakes and thunderstorms cause a house to vibrate similar to the way blast vibrations affect structures, but sometimes can far exceed vibration levels from blasting. Changes in humidity or temperature, on the other hand, cause more subtle movements as the house expands and contracts, but these subtle movements can cause hairline cracks in plasterboard and masonry. In combination, these environmental factors exert a continual stress on structures, like your home, 24 hours a day, each day of the year. 
In fact, environmental forces can easily create strains in a structure that exceed those caused by any blasting activities. To illustrate this point, just a 10% change in humidity is capable of producing the same amount of strain on a house as our ground vibrations. Hard to believe? Well, it's true. The following chart compares typical blasting standards with vibrations caused by man-made and environmental activities. Notice within the chart data that humans can feel vibrations that are well below levels produced by all of the other sources shown. Now it's important to keep in mind that regardless of the source of the vibrations or even the age and composition of a structure, your house will not be nearly as sensitive to vibrations as your body will. There are also several non-vibratory environmental forces that cannot be felt or heard, but nevertheless can impose powerful forces on houses. An excellent example of this is soil pressure on the foundation walls. It is a naturally occurring force that can be aggravated by surface drainage problems such as low spots in your yard, blocked or missing gutters and downspouts, soil settlement, frequent watering of landscaped areas near foundations, and freeze-thaw cycles that can even crack concrete. These non-vibratory environmental forces have a significant impact on homes. In summary, your home continuously experiences various types of forces throughout its life. Most often, a combination of several of these forces is necessary to cause a crack to form within a structure, such as your home. In comparison, vibrations from nearby blasting projects that are within recommended and or legal limits are not likely to cause or contribute to any form of structural problems. The information provided in this video has described candidly and in detail how you and your home may be affected by vibrations that can result from blasting activities. These explosives experts are very aware that blasting projects can be conducted safely and without causing harm to your home. They realize that the best way to safeguard your home is with well-designed blasts that reduce vibration potential by monitoring vibration levels with the regular use of seismographs and by strictly enforcing all local and state blasting regulations. By far, any form of adverse effect to nearby homes from blasting activities is a very rare occurrence. Good communication with people living near blasting operations is of utmost importance to blasting professionals. They strive to be good neighbors. In fact, in many instances, the person responsible for the blasting activity lives in a surrounding community. Now with this in mind, let's briefly review some of the important points covered in this video. One, blasting associated with nearby construction or mining project can produce vibrations. Two. People are able to feel vibrations at very low levels, thereby creating apprehension that can lead to concern that such vibrations may cause damage to their homes. Three, strict regulations are in place that control the level of vibrations that might reach your home. These regulations keep blast vibrations well below levels that can cause any damage to your home or surrounding structures. Four, your home is not damaged by blasting that is repeated over an extended period of time. Five, vibrations from man-made forces such as hammering, slamming doors, large equipment moving over bumpy roads, or fireworks often reach levels similar to those produced by nearby blasting activities. Six, vibrations from environmental forces such as tornadoes, hurricanes, and thunderstorms can reach dangerously high levels. We want you to understand the facts about vibrations as they impact your home. So please, never hesitate to ask questions or express your concerns to those directly involved with a nearby blasting project. They'll be able to provide you with helpful information about the blasting activities they're conducting, and they can further your understanding of potential blasting effects. And finally, agencies that regulate blasting activities employ personnel that specialize in blasting-related issues. They, too, are more than willing to address any questions or concerns you may have. Our goal has been to provide you with helpful information about blasting vibrations and to assure you that these vibrations will not harm you or your home. As blasting professionals, we're proud to be an essential part of the economy and a major contributor to our standard of living. But most of all, we're glad to have this opportunity to help you better understand vibration that occurs from blasting projects. Music